Welcome to CPH session 18, Descriptive Statistics Summarizing and Visualizing Data. This is part D, Descriptive Statistics for Binary Data. So far in parts A through C, we've talked about what the descriptive statistics are and how to compute descriptive statistics for continuous data. But what happens when you, our data set includes items that use question formats, such as multiple choice, yes, no, or even a checklist? Those question formats generate categorical data. And even if we code responses into numerical results, such as single is one, married is two, divorced is three, etc., those numerical values have no meaning and cannot be computed as continuous variables. Instead, these variables will be handled as binary data, and that's what we'll talk about in this session. In session 18, part D, I'll show you how to manage data that is either categorical or binary in nature. Then we'll practice calculating descriptive statistics for binary data. And finally, I'll show you some ways that we can visualize our binary data sets. But first, let me clear something up. I want to go back to those examples of questions I showed you in the last slide. Say, for example, you were conducting a structured interview and asked a person's marital status. We probably have more than two possible answers, such as married, single, divorced, and widowed. So can we consider this binary data if that type of question we would say is categorical nominal? The answer is yes. If we consider each choice independently and consider each response to that choice as either yes or no, that would be binary. So a person either responded yes or no to being married, where no would be any other response other than married. And in fact, in some cases, we can even code our database exactly like this, or we must. For questions with a checklist format, in which respondents can answer as many choices as they'd like, we must have a separate variable for each one, for each choice, and then code it as binary as either checked or unchecked. So for example, if someone had chosen general medicine as their answer to this choice, there would be a variable for general medicine, and it would be marked and coded as either checked or unchecked. Similarly, if someone had marked general surgery or not marked it, there would be a separate variable for this choice and we would code that response. And we need a separate variable for all of these choices. So looking back at all the types of data, we can still broadly consider data as either continuous or categorical. If data is categorical, then we'll treat it as binary before we can compute it descriptive statistics. Comparatively to continuous data, working with binary data is pretty simple. Uh, we can't compute its location, dispersion, or shape. Our binary choices are only yes or no. Therefore, the only meaningful descriptive statistic is proportion. And that is the number of yeses or nos out of the total number, n. And so then, just a bit of nomenclature. So just as before, we needed separate symbols to represent our population mean and our sample mean when we were talking about continuous data, we also will use separate symbols to distinguish between the population proportion and the sample proportion. So we'll use P to refer to the population proportion and P hat for the proportion found in our sample of the population. I'll show you a quick example. Let's say that we have two groups in a clinical trial. We have babies born to mothers with HIV who are given the antiretroviral drug AZT, and that'll be our treatment group, and it included 180 babies. And our second group will be babies born to mothers with HIV who were given a placebo. That'll be our control group, and it included 183 babies. And we test the HIV status, so it's a binary yes or no, positive or not positive in those babies. And we calculate the proportion of babies that are HIV positive in each of the two groups. 
Our treatment group had 13 HIV positive babies and our control group had 40 HIV positive babies. So computing P hat for the treatment group, we get about 0.07, which we'll report as 7%. And in the placebo group, we compute about 0.22, which we'll report as 22%. And in terms of describing our binary data, that's it. Proportion is the only summary statistic we need for binary outcomes. Let's look now at ways to visualize our results from binary data. The first option will be a pie chart. Pie charts are good when you have maybe two to seven possible choices. Here we're looking at all the registered vehicles in Thailand classified into the type of vehicle. We see that there are six possible classifications and each vehicle registration had to choose yes or no to each of those six choices. Um, interestingly, I can tell you that uh, even though there's 57% of the registered vehicles in Thailand are motorcycles, um, upwards of 75 or 80% of traffic fatalities are in fact from motorcycle passengers, showing that those motorcycle passengers are disproportionately at risk here in Thailand. Our next choice is a bar chart. Bar charts are good for maybe three to five ch choices or uh, response options. They're also more appropriate when the proportions are relatively similar, just as they are in this example from the poll of Virginia voters. Uh, notice that there's space between the bars, which is different from a histogram. And next, we can use a stacked bar chart. Stacked bar chart allows us to combine two types of data. So if you notice, we're presenting two different variables here. Voter preference shown along the bottom in the total number of votes in the full bar. And secondly, the breakdown of each candidate's voters based on their education level, shown in different colors. And then lastly, we can have a 100% stacked bar chart. So this example here presents the exact same data as was in the previous example of a bar chart. The difference here though is that the bars are scaled to the same 100% level rather than scaled to the nominal value. 100% stacked bar charts are useful for combining two data sets just like the regular bar charts, but 100% stacked bar charts also allow us to make comparisons between the breakup within our main category. For example, we can see that a comparatively higher proportion of people who didn't finish a four-year degree preferred Trump and Carson over the other three candidates. And finally, we have tables. In tables, just as with charts, uh, it's good practice to include the number of responses in your sample, such as shown here. Again, look at how tables are organized and styled in published literature when making your own tables. And at this point, you should be ready to answer question seven on your session 18 practice worksheet. This should be the last question on that worksheet. However, there is one more video for session 18, which will talk about how to handle Likert items, which is really important.